So Frank, you were the national parks photographer for for quite some time. 150 years. 150 years, that's <laughs> impressive, very impressive. <laughs> How did you come about getting that position? You know, it was a federal position. I had to apply for it. It was the last of a long series of federal positions. I worked for every administration since Reagan. So I worked for the Department of Defense and Commerce and Interior and Justice and did work for the FBI and the Secret Service. Um, and then the final assignment was uh, for the Park Service as the eminent photographer, they call it, position. And um, I'm still surprised I got it. <laughs> because I'm a self-taught photographer and I applied for it not knowing I wouldn't get it because there were 28,000 other people that applied for this job. And I finished my tour with the Park Service in 2011. Okay. It's a five-year position. The Park Service does it once every 20 years or so. They'll hire, hire a photographer to go photograph America and, um, and then, then you're, you're done. But as you guys know, I, I, I've never felt like I was done. You know, I was in the military for a while and the one thing they never tell you when you leave the military is there's a giant hole in your life where your service used to be. You know, so I got out and one day here I am the guy wearing the white hat, you know, as we talked about the protector, the, you know, serving my country and the next day I'm a lowly civilian like you guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I had to find a way to sort of continue and, and I left the military from a bad parachuting accident. So I couldn't walk around and shoot a machine gun anymore, but I could walk around and shoot pictures. So that's how I sort of found my way into the government taking pictures as for me, this is a patriotic thing. You know, taking pictures of the national parks and, and sharing them with people and using them for fundraisers and, and uh, exhibits like this. For me, this is a patriotic thing. The idea of preserving America and America's treasures makes me feel like I'm wearing the white hat again. Tell us, what did you think when Tracy Mars contacted you and asked you to come see us? I was honored and flattered. You know, the villages is world famous. So when I saw that email with the villages, I was like, holy crap, they know who I am. But then she said, well, I want you to come down and I want you to take a couple of my boys out <laughs> on an adventure. And I was like, I don't think they understand what an adventure is, Frank style. Like, I hope these guys are up to the challenge, you know, because, you know, you're gonna be walking through the swamps waist deep in water with the snakes and gators and mosquitoes as big as your head. And, um, you know, I was like, I hope these guys are ready for this because I'm not gonna hold back. It was uh, pretty fantastic. Um, I mean, first day when we first got there, I mean, we, no trail, straight through the swamp and everything. I mean, it was pretty memorable. I, you know, I'm not a photographer. I, I'm in the design business, and when you go to architecture school, most students have an interest in photography, but mainly for documenting buildings and, and spaces. And hanging out with you two, who are professional photographers, in my opinion, it gave me a, a different outlook of what photography is. I, I'll never look at a sunset again the same way. I'll never look at a grasshopper standing on a sign. You know, something as simple as that, or a, a spider web, you know, and, and how you folks see things and compose them and take advantage of the light. So Brian, you're normally behind the camera, yep. videotaping us or taking pictures of our uh, community. Usually, you know, I'll be on the other side of the camera shooting weddings or people dancing on the square or, you know, like stuff like that, villages activities, villages construction updates and different things like that. So being on this side of the camera it is, and again, out of my comfort zone in a good way. You're doing great. It's a little warm in here, uh, but yeah. Brian and I really connected out there under the idea that every time you take a picture, it's history. And it may not be history just now, but a lifetime from now, any one of those pictures can be considered historic. There's so much power in a photograph that every time you snap the shutter, you know, there's the potential to, to freeze a moment of history that could be of value, not just to yourself, but to other people, way down the line. At the end of the day, we not only had an adventure, but our adventure expands beyond what we just experienced because of the photos that we took. So now some of those photos that we took on that adventure, I mean, hanging in this building, you know, those moments that are just the 60th of a second of time 
are frozen forever, and those we switch we stretch that fraction of a second out into years and years and decades for people to experience what we got to experience. That's the magic of photography. You can bring people. We're not. I didn't bring two people on that trip. I brought 10,000 people on that trip through the photography, and because it's going to be displayed in such a beautiful place like this, it's going to make it all all more special.